I'm Dr. Carl Pepin. I'm from the University of Florida uh, in Gainesville, Florida in the United States. And I've been working in the area of ischemic heart disease in women for a number of years. The, uh, pr the topic that I spoke about today was the uh, problem of ischemic heart disease in women. And one of the uh, studies that we've been involved in is called the WISE. The WISE is an acronym for the Women's Ischemic Syndrome Evaluation, which grew out of an initiative in our country to address the problem that more women have ischemic heart disease and more women die of ischemic heart disease and more women have what's called normal coronary angiograms than men, yet there were no reasonable explanations for those findings. So in 1996, we were funded to begin a series of projects called the WISE program. This was a uh, consecutive case cohort of almost a thousand women recruited from four different sites in the United States. These women all had symptoms and signs of stable ischemic heart disease and then had to have been referred for a coronary angiogram. We then did various testing routines at the centers and followed the patients initially for five years and then more recently we did a 10-year follow-up. And what we found was that among the women who had signs and symptoms of ischemia, almost two-thirds of the women had no obstructive coronary artery disease, which is in distinct contrast to what you would expect with a comparable cohort of men, where 80 to 90 percent of the men would have severe obstructive disease. Furthermore, we learned that these women had adverse outcomes, and it clearly was not a benign syndrome. The adverse outcomes consisted of an increase in hospitalization, and most of those hospitalizations were hospitalizations for heart failure. They, of course, also had uh, myocardial infarctions and strokes uh, in follow-up, but we were surprised at the uh, increase in hospitalization for heart failure because these women had normal systolic left ventricular function at their baseline coronary angiography. So when we um, retrospectively looked at their um, left ventricular end diastolic pressure, we learned that it was elevated, it was 16. Uh, and we also uh, found that in a sample of patients who were hospitalized for these heart failure admissions, that the left ventricular ejection fraction was preserved. So this we believe then is a harbinger of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, which we're seeing now in increased frequencies, particularly among older women. So those findings were reported initially, then as I said, extended to a 10-year follow-up, and um, we, we basically saw again increasing frequencies of those adverse outcomes. Multiple studies now much larger uh, and also extending to men have replicated those findings. Additionally, we found that the women who had testing for endothelial dysfunction and testing for coronary microvascular dysfunction had an alarming increase in the adverse outcomes. So it turned out that those two findings were predictors of adverse outcome. So I think the, the key points to, to emphasize as we uh, recap would be that it's important to evaluate these women. The evaluation uh, shouldn't stop with the finding of a so-called normal coronary angiogram. That's because the outcome is clearly not benign. And the, the additional evaluation should consist of additional testing for coronary vascular problems such as endothelial dysfunction or microvascular dysfunction.